Hello, my soccer universe. We need to talk about quite a big week in Italy. And yes, I probably should have done a video before the weekend because the Coppa really delivered at least on two fronts uh, with, with uh, exciting games and exciting storylines. But that was not to be turned by uh, Serie A, who also had a kind of an interesting weekend. Yes, the top three, well, or the big three, I should say, all won uh, rather expectedly. But uh, there were other games where we definitely have to put a little bit of focus on uh, with quite some drama. But um, with headlines, we have to start with the fiery Derby della Madonnina, which did not end the way I like it. However, it was a game that definitely has to be talked about uh, so much stuff happening in there and uh, probably one of the best games that I've seen that was uh, ruined by a red card although that's what coming also Atalanta and Lazio play out an exciting cup tie with Atalanta, Atalanta winning despite being a man down uh, in Serie A an absolutely nuts Friday evening game where uh, Fiorentina manages to snatch a point with two men down uh, a game they probably would have won uh, if at full strength as i said milan juve and inter get uh, wins and then atalanta lazio we had an atalanta lazio uh, double and this time lazio hits back um, fully deservedly winning and we and i'm wearing roma we also have to praise uh paulo fonseca with the awesome job he's doing at Roma, despite having so much trouble surrounding uh, Roma. It's rather remarkable, I have to say. But as I said, we have to start in the Coppa Italia uh, with the Derby della Madonnina. I mean, that was a game, honestly, this was the calmest I've been about a Derby in a long time because I th said to myself, I don't really mind if Milan gets eliminated because you know you have the Europa League uh, you wanna uh, make a Serie A challenge it's not the most important and yes it is the Derby if the Derby is won great I definitely wouldn't mind that but you know I was not uh, fully invest invested like I've, I've been in previous dar derbies um, and yes I would like Milan to win the Coppa Italia again which is the one co which, which is one of the few competitions they just cannot win for some reason, at least since I'm a fan, uh, I have seen them win it once, and that's in 30, more than 30 years or something, or something like that. The Derby started out pretty even with chances on both sides, but just at the point, I think the, uh, the first uh, tick was when uh, Kea need to come off uh, um, with an in injury and Tomori came on for him, who actually had a good game, but I had the feeling at that was the point when Inter slightly got the upper hand. I will make the place of both Ibrahimovic and Ibrahimovic does what he does best, just taking uh, a shot, looking a little bit, and then, you know, right off the uh, upright into the net. It was a great goal and it showed again that Ibra is the deciding factor in many ways for Milan. Yes, they can win without him, but with him they have someone to hold up the ball. It would have been seen in this game uh, already that uh, it was he is desperately needed, especially if you play, play against a big opponent to have someone to hold, hold the ball, distribute a little bit and you have this focus focal point in attack. Uh, as I said, I thought at that point Inter had the game under control. However, Milan's lead did not come totally un unexpected. And I think they were holding out well and they were holding their own with Inter. And I guess getting a little bit, uh, trying to get a little bit under in Inter skin, the game totally erupted right before the halftime when I think uh, Ro uh, Romagnoli uh, made a foul on Lukaku. For some reason, he was very upset about that. Uh, then Salamakas tries to console him, also um, brushes him off. I mean, he clearly was uh, angered by something. And then Ibra comes up to him, calls him a donkey, uh, where Lukaku did not reply kindly to that. I understand, I mean, I don't want to be called a donkey as well. 
and the whole thing flares up in a way that you can see Slatan really rubbing it into Lukaku, who is absolutely on the edge, uh, trying to push people around, trying to really want to get at Ibrahimovic. And Ibrahimovic, you, you can see with his big eyes, come on, call your mother, do the voodoo! Whatever, really riling him up. Um, to be honest, I think... With all this fighting going on, uh, I mean, it did not come uh, to blows uh, right there, but it could, could have gone. I mean, Lukaku thre threatened to throw or uh, to shoot him or whatever. I think at that moment both should have been sent off. Uh, it was just, they, uh, Lukaku could not be counted. He was absolutely, ab uh, this is unlike Lukaku. I, I, and I confess it again, he's playing for the wrong team, but I actually really like Leo Lukaku. I like his demeanor. What happened there? This was not the Lukaku that I know. Uh, it was the Ibrahimovic, you know, although I never saw it in that nastiness uh, there. And, you know, I'm all for trash talk. It's part of the, of, of, of the game. But Ibrahimovic really, really tried hard to get Lukaku sent off there. Uh, that has 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 been. I think both should have been said, especially since Lukaku could not calm down. Um, and even uh, in the hallway, didn't look didn't look good. I actually I actually, actually thought that I'm not. Uh, uh, f you know, I don't I don't watch boxing. I don't watch M M and A. But I was intrigued by the f uh, by the thought. What would happen if the two went off after each other? I mean, Lukaku clearly has the weight and probably the strength advantage, but Ibrahimovic holding a few martial arts black belts, I think that would have been an intriguing fight, to be honest. However, I felt uh, when you're coming out of, of, of the half, you saw Ibrahimovic a little bit uneasy and Lukaku coming out all smiles. And at that moment, I thought, oh no, uh, they, the, the team could calm him down uh, because I really, I, I really thought, would the game have gone on? There would have been 10 more minutes to play. I think Lukaku would have gotten a red card and sent off. But the break came, uh, fortunately for Inter, at the right time. And so, uh, in the end, it was Ibrahimovic who got sent off for one of the most stupid tripping calls ever. Because he's on the mid there is uh, Brahim Diaz, who probably touched uh, um, a call, a call, a call, a call, a call first. But he doesn't need, need to go there. He gets a second yellow card and is sent off. And that changed the game right there. Milan could hold on for quite a while. I, I, I actually thought that Inter had trouble uh, break, breaking down uh, Milan, but then it was in the end a penalty call. And yes, Castillejo has the foot so far. Was it, I think it was Castillejo. Whoever it was, it doesn't really matter. The foot was so far out that even if he didn't touch him, I think it is enough for a penalty foul, uh, I thought when the man when they showed the replay, clear, absolutely clear foul. Uh, yes, he may not have touched it, but yeah, honestly, uh, you gotta give the penalty. And then Lukaku steps up with probably one of the best penalties you'll ever ever ever, ever see. Makes it one one. Um, and then I actually, at that point, Milan was just hanging in there, just hanging, maybe waiting for over them, maybe getting into another panel, 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 panel which I really did not want to have. Uh, so in a way, it was then a relief, and in a deep stoppage time, why did we have a deep stoppage time? Because the referee came off as, as, as well. I have said that the ref did not have his greatest game, but I I didn't find him... Um, you know that, uh, that 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 it was going against against Milan either, but uh, so another ref come, comes on the whole change of it takes forever, and so you get a deep stoppage of and then uh, Eriksen scores a great free kick, and I have to say the foul before that was not a foul. That is the one thing where there was in my, in my mind a mistake. I think Milan actually if they would have a little bit calmer played a counter attack before they could have snatched the second a second goal and won it one. As I said, uh, if this was a league derby, I think I would have been devastated by uh, the way it went. Since it was a cup derby, not so much. But boy, so many storylines in there. Um, Atalanta Lazio was also a great game that I unfortunately did not see. Uh, it was 
what I call the perfect win because Atalanta won 3-2, but they were down 2-1 two, uh, two, 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 uh, after being 1-0 up, so um, two lead changes in there. Jim City gives them the early lead, Murici uh, equal in 17, and then Acerbi has an out-of-body experience where he basically just has the ball and keeps running, keeps running, and puts it into the, in, into the net. 2-1 uh, Lazio, uh, but Atalanta not with the turn, but of course Malinowski right thereafter gets the equalizer. And then you think the game uh, is changed because Palomino is sent off for holding. Uh, however, right after Miranchuk makes it, after Romero assist, makes it 3-2. Uh, and it was never then Lazio because Zapata even got the penalty there. That was missed. So Lazio was kept in the game. Uh, he even brought then on Immobile, uh, who, of course, it, 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 it's a cup game, so you don't play the first team squad. Atalanta pulled the game out of the bag. And um, the only thing uh, that was a uh, kind, kind, kind of collateral dam damage that the Romero, who played uh, great against Milan and also in this game, had quite a good contribution, uh, got in injured so could not play then in the league game, which had some impact, we have to say. You were no trouble with Spal. I mean, that draw was rather unfair, uh, although, you know, it's all neutral at the moment with no spectators, but Morata, Frabotta, Kula getting his first goal, Kulusevski then laid on uh, Chiesa, scoring the four goals. Um, and Napoli also scored four, had a great first half. Koulibaly, Lozano, Politano, Elmas in the 5th, tw uh, 20th, 30th and 40th. Score four goals, Napoli cruising at that point. However, they let Spezia, and this is typically La Lazio, well, let Spezia back in the game who scored two goals in three minutes, uh, Giazzi and Acampora. But, of course, Napoli hangs on. And so we have now a semi-final. I mean, what a tasty semi-final it is. We have Inter against Juve. And we have Napoli against At Atalanta. The only thing that bothers me is that with Milan's elimination, there is no team with red anymore. It's all black, blue, and white uh, in the, on the team's jerseys. But still, what a tasty uh, set of fixtures uh, right there. And let's see who will... I mean, Inter-Juve is probably one of the uh, fiercest rivalries in the Itali Italian game. So I'm really looking forward to that one. First one already tonight. Uh, probably a must-watch. Moving on to Serie A, we spent a lot of time on the Coppa Italia, but that was made probably the biggest storylines there. Torino Fiorentina, what a mad game that was. Uh, I thought that, especially the first half, that Fiorentina, and I saw that game, uh, had the better of, 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 of the game, even hit the um, uh, post ones through Vlahovic, but the better chances fell actually to Torino, where Zaza uh, at least once hit the, cro the crossman, that was a, a, another good chance, where uh, I think it was Verdi was put the, uh, the goalkeeper then touched him, but I think it was, I, I was glad that uh, there was no penalty given, because that would have been a, re a little bit rough. Vlahovic scores then right after the half, however, fracture offside, so it doesn't, it doesn't count. And then you thought Fiorentina is imploding because Castrovilli is sent off for being a last man. <sighs> tough call, tough call. Uh, yes, technically he was the last man, but I think there were others that could have prevented a chance. However, that did not really hurt. Uh, I just see it was not Verdi. Who got the ball because we already came on the 65th. Uh, however, Fiorentina Spiritino was not deterred uh, by, by that and got a wonderful goal. Nice interplay, Ribery um, plays to. Uh, Plays the pass, running in the box, uh, the 1-2 with uh, Bob Bonaventura, then rounding the keeper, pulling it in the net. It was a symphony of a goal. And 1-0 Fiorentina with a man down. And you think, yes, Fiorentina is going to win this. This one, Torino is going to get into more trouble. No, Milenkovic implodes. And uh, after, a foul, after uh, I think he fouled Belotti or whatever, the two of them, he says some nasty words. Belotti turns on the language, immediately goes with the head in red card. Fiorentina down to nine men. Of course, Ribéry needs to come uh, come off, and of course, Torino throws everything on, and they get the equalizer through Belotti in the 88th. Finally, uh, one is to say it took a long time for Torino to pull that one out of the bag. Uh, we can talk about, a lot about Bologna Milan too, but I don't want this uh, video to become uh, the longest video I've ever made in a weekend re review. Milan was a deserved win. They get two penalties. Ibrahimovic, please don't ever take a penalty again. We have better penalty takers. And if it's not Cassie, Jalanoglu, there are 
great penalty takers, Bieler. Zlatan, you're not one of them. I know you want to get a 5 5 500, 600, goal. So uh, the penalty is safe, but on the, on the rebound, Rebic score, scores it. Milan having the game rather under and on the control, and Cassia scores the second penalty, which put me at ease. The only thing I have, have, have to say when uh, Poli gets the 1-2, um, there was a little, a few nervy moments, but in the end, Milan, I think, pulls through. Juve having a great first half performance where they only get the goal through Chiesa. Um, and I don't know, I know it looked like maybe it looked nice on, on the pitch, but you in orange does not work. And maybe, yeah, Clockwork Orange with the Drugi fans and whatever, uh, you know, maybe there is something there, but I don't like it. Um, however, in the second half, it was. Um, Sampdoria was a little bit better in the game and probably could snatch the Eagle Cup, but in the end, Ramsey makes it 2 0. It was fully deserved. The first half was probably one of Juve's best showings this season. The kids are going crazy there. And then Inter uh, with a rather yeah, uh, easy 4 0 win over Benevento. People don't give us, don't give Milan the favor of beating Inter in Prota with an own goal and then Martinez Lukaku and uh, Lukaku again uh, scoring the goals fully deserved. Uh, Inter playing in the nice gray and black jerseys and yeah, that's on the list for me. I know I need a second Inter jersey, I need a second Juve jersey. So uh, that's definitely on the, on, on the list of going up there. Um, then the second part of Atalanta Lazio, that was a game that took an uh, interesting turn because it was played at 3 or 3 o'clock. So the goal behind the big new stand uh, was ac actually a disadvantage because the sun was standing so deep. And uh, that caused some trouble. And I I'm, don't want to say it because it was a really nice shot for Marosic in the third, third, third minute. But I think if you have better vision, you probably can save it. But it was a really nice shot. The third minute setting Lazio on the way. Lazio. Actually playing it really nice and uh, hitting Atalanta on the counter, having uh, I think Milinkovic Savic even hitting the post and then scoring right after they have an immobile assist score Korea who can round the keeper. Um, Atalanta after that really not look looking at the whole game. I think it was definitely more Lazio the whole way through. Um, they get the goal through Pasolic in the seventh, in the ninth. I think uh, Murray hit the post and passed the Pasolic puts puts it then in. Um, however, Lucas Leiva, Mobile Correa come off. Escalante, Murici and Pereira come on, and uh, Pereira and Murici combined and for making three one fully deserved win for Lazio. Um, and then the other, Na Na Napoli getting an uneventful win over Parma. I mean, Elma's goal is worth wa watching there. Uh, Politano scoring the other one. And then Roma against the, up until then, best defense in Serie, Serie A takes 10 minutes or 9 minutes to score three goals. Mancini, Mkhitaryan, Majoral, an absolute implosion. And this uh, explosion of goals, uh, an implosion of Verona. Uh, and that without Edin Dzeko, who uh, had a flare-up with um, Fonseca, who basically uh, came, came out and said, yeah, if you apologize to the team, then you can play again. Otherwise, you can leave this January. So uh, that's one to watch. Roma, I think, needs a striker of the Dzeko quality up front. Uh, because Majoral, I don't think, is cutting it. But I actually have to say, when we see the table now... Uh, Let's pull it up. Uh, Roma sits in third place and they don't have Zaniolo. They're having the Jacob flare up. They, uh, they have uh, ownership change. There is so much trouble on going on against Roma. Them sitting in third place is a damn fine job and they're playing excitingly. Yes, the loss to Lazio probably hurts every Ro Roma fan, but I have to say the job that Fonseca is doing, please, if you have any modicum of sense, do not fire Fonseca. He is not playing with his full squad the whole season and you're still in third season, sitting in third place, potentially challenging, potentially challenging for a title. I think for Roma, they need to be a little bit more consistent to be talking about a title challenge, but it is a Champions League spot is rather, rather uh, a strong possibility. We see them here sitting at 42%, which is below Atalanta, but I, I, I actually can see with the way that Atalanta is also waving. I mean, Atalanta needs to put together a run. Roma can get this Champions League spot. I think they are a top four quality team. And Fonseca is an awesome coach. 
hold on to him for dear life. I think whoever, when Roma fires him and he goes go go at him, you will actually regret this big time. We have still Milan Inter rather clear on, on top. It seems that those will finish 1-2, although Juventus is also in there because they have the game in hand. But against Napoli, although they might ac actually win that one. Um, Lazio, Atalanta, I think Lazio, nah, Napoli, Atalanta potentially could challenge for the Champions League spot. I don't quite see it because all of them are... On the rather uneven part, um, I think the Sassuolo story is over now uh, and Hellas also will not challenge in there. On the bottom, the three on the bottom look rather clear and I, there are two teams in there that I really don't like seeing down there, to be honest. Uh, but I was going through the list, I think one of them will get relegated. Uh, when I look at other teams that I think uh, deserve more re re relegation, I'm always looking at Genoa, although they're picking up the points now. So maybe not. We gotta see. We gotta see. Uh, that's another another video. How would my ideal Serie A or any other league look like? But you know, I'm gonna offend so 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 many people, and this is something for the off season. So let's see if I ever get to that. Uh, adjusting for this game in hand, Juve actually uh, goes uh, ahead of Roma. We still see Milan being the biggest surprise of the season because they're massively outperforming uh, their own rating, and yeah. Maybe if they get the full squad, squad back, I mean, you have to say, Milan actually was riding the storm. Uh, they were tested, they tested, and they're still hold, holding on on the lead. They have now two more easy games, and then the schedule gets a little bit tougher. So uh, I think by the end of this month, we will get a much clearer picture of how things, things are going. Expectedly, still Inter. Inter is the favorite. They have the deepest squad, they have the probably the strongest, the strongest team, and they don't. They only can focus on Serie A and maybe a little bit Coppa Italia. So uh, that's why Inter is very much favored. You see the big um, green uh, line on the number one spot. Then Milan, Juve, rather level. You see, we have seven teams up top but there's the top three and then there's the bottom four in those top seven and those are the teams that are challenging for for europe so solo uh Ellis, as i said no and even for relegation the picture is becoming rather clear so uh very exciting up top i think Serie A is still the most exciting league especially because there is a veritable title race on the bottom it's a little bit more decided and we have kind of this broad midfield of teams that if they would I click it. I'm looking at you, Fior Fiorentina. You could actually challenge for one of those top spots as well, but you're just a total mess. Next round, um, Inter at, at Fiorentina. The cup game was a tough ta uh, ask for Inter. I still expect him to win. Uh, what else? We have Juve Roma. Huge match matchup. Uh, must be on everyone's calendar. I said Milan has an easy game at Crotone. Napoli against Genoa is not a foregone conclusion, I would say. And I think, yeah, Lazio against Cagliari, who are we missing? Atalanta Torino uh, is in there. So those are the top teams. Well, that was a longish video. I hope you enjoyed it. So many things. I can I could talk another 23 minutes on, CS, on Serie A because so many things happened. And, you know, I'm very passionate about this league. But in any case, we'll end it here. Um, Drop a line below if you want to say anything more about the two competitions that we'll talk about here. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.